12 week Christmas without any presents is dreadful to be so poor. We have mother and father and each other, anyways. The father away the war, we shan't have him for a good time. The reason mother proposed not having presents is that we ought not to spend money for pleasure when our men are suffering so at the front. I know I ought to sacrifice gladly, but you can't. No, I can't. <laughs> we need a few dollars or less, but I don't see that helping the army. I don't expect presents, but there's a book I'd love to buy for myself. I plan to spend mine on music. And mine for a nice box of favorite drawing pencils. Mother doesn't, doesn't expect us to give up everything. We might have little fun. I'm sure we grub hard enough to earn it. I know I do teaching ill-behaved children all day. Well, I'm a slave to Aunt March, who worries you till you're ready to fly out the window or box your ears. Doing the housework hour after hour with Hannah stiffens my hands so I can't practice the piano. But that's simple lining. You haven't a real piano anyway. So sad to see you with your paper keyboard. None of you suffer as I do going to a school with impertinent girls who plague you if you don't know your lessons and laugh at your family and your dresses. I'd like to catch them at it. Don't you wish we had the money Papa lost when we were little? Well, we don't. We do make fun for ourselves. We're a slim set we are. Don't use slang words, Joe. It's so boyish. <laughs> That's why I do it. I detest rude, unladylike girls. And I hate affected, silly, spoiled brats. Ah, uh, how the birds in their little nests agree. <sighs> oh, I hate to think I must grow up and be prim as China. Why can't girls join up and go fight as Papa has? They need nurses. I don't want benches, Beth. I want to fight. If Joe is a tomboy and Amy a goose, what am I, please? You make us all better, Beth. Mother should be coming up. Her slippers look so worn out. I thought to get her some new ones with what I've saved. No, I shall. I'm the oldest. No, no, I'm the man in the family with Papa away. Why don't we each get something for Mother rather than for ourselves? But what? Handkerchiefs. Better gloves. Let's let Marmy think we're getting things for ourselves. We'll have to go tomorrow afternoon since we've got to spend the morning working on our Christmas play. Your play. I shan't act anymore after this one. I'm too old for it. <laughs> Bosh! Not as long as you can trail about in a white gown with your hair down. Besides, you're the best actress we've got. Amy, come practice your fainting. You're stiff as a poker. Don't intend to make myself black and blue, falling flat as you do. I shall fall into a chair. Do it like this. Clasp your hands and stagger across the room, crying fanatically, Rodrigo! Save me! Save me! Rodrigo, save me, save me. <laughs> Never mind. Don't worry, Joe. The last time through was our best. Yes, but Hugo has to die in agonies of pain and remorse, not stomach cramps. You write such splendid things, Joe. Really, you are a regular Shakespeare. Well, the witch's curse is rather nice, but I've done better. Marmy, at last! Hello, girls. So, how have you got on today? Meg, how's your cold? Fine, Mommy. Joan, you look tired to death. Oh, rehearsals, rehearsals, rehearsals. Well, I have a treat for you all after supper. A letter from Father, and a nice, long Christmas letter. It's so splendid they let him go as a chaplain while they said he was too old to be drafted. Does it say when he'll come home? Months, I'm afraid. I swear I shall faint if we don't hear the letter this minute. Yes, come on, you have to read it now. Now, 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 you are an impossible gaggle. Well, I shan't read the part meant for me alone. Ooh. Stop that. Give them all my dear love and a Christmas kiss, and that I find my best comfort their affection. I know they will be loving children to their mother at all times, that I may be ever prouder and fonder of my little women. I'm a selfish pig. But I'll try to be better, but he may be disappointed in me. So will we all. Better is a journey we are all on. We have our burdens and our road before us. My burden is dishes and desserts and, and paint girls with nice pianos. Well, I envy the author of every book I read. And I every painter. Oh, here we were in the slough of despair, 
And mommy, per usual, has pulled us out and set us on our path. And our path, <laughs> oh, is to clean the house. Don Pedro. 
your father to Zaran, hate this villain Hugo, who has in past times destroyed many close to me. I curse him, thwart his plans and will. Oh, dark spirits, be revenged on him. End of Act One. Oh, I think it's very frightening and thrilling. Act Two. Rodrigo's my soul, eyes are await. Where art thou? Zara, my summer rose, Rodrigo comes. You're the lover now? We're shorthanded. Thou spirit of love. Oh. <laughs> Children, you have shamed your father. Get off me, Joe. Sorry. Away! I will enter you in the castle's deepest dungeon.
home, Joe. Such, such fun. Stop whirling like a dervish. What? A regular note of invitation for Mrs. Gardiner. A little dance on New Year's Eve. Marmy agrees, but whatever will we wear? So many dresses are all we've got. If only I had silk. No one wears silk in wartime. Oh, my burn, my dress has that horrid burn on the back. Just sit as much as you can. At a dance? I should need gloves to dance. Use mine. I don't care what people think. I shall stay up scrapes and be prim as a dish. Now, go tone up your beauty so I can finish this splendid story. A dance? I'm going to a dance! She's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> I do. 
I shall have to toil and moil all my days until I grow old and sour and ugly because I'm poor. Oh, now who's the goose? Poor dear chap. I shall make a grand fortune as a writer and support you in grand style. Talk, 
and shut up all week. Jewel has a tomb with her grandfather. Hmm, isn't there a nice girl who reads you and amuse you? Don't know any. You know me? So I do. Would you come? Hmm. If your grandfather let me. Only if your mother agreed. I think she would. Now off you go before you catch pneumonia.
Perhaps Lauren doesn't play because his mother, an Italian woman, was a musician. Mother and father both died when he was young, and his grandfather brought him to live here. Well, piano or not, he has handsome black eyes and pretty manners. Not even set foot in our house. But you've not noticed his eyes, Joe. He's a nice boy, and I like him, but no sentimental drops, please. Well, of course he must come and see us. Yes, and bring his dark eyes and pretty manners. <gasps> Revolting! <laughs> You must work, Laurie. You've fallen behind in science and in mathematics. Can't a fellow have a brief vacation? You're never about, and you've practically moved in with the marches. Well, they're practically splendid girls, all of them. And by the way, you don't seem to take your eyes off Meg. Nonsense. Laurie, you might let your fascination with these girls simply reflect on you not having a mother. Good heavens! Must I be under your microscope sight all the time? I'm practically sick of books, and I'm starting to find people interesting. Which is rather hard on a tutor. You'll live for an hour, won't you? You're quite right. I guess you can't get into mischief with a little nunnery over there. Mrs. March wants a tight ship, and I admire her for it. Can't 
strong. I'm simply too angry. And Joe? Yes, Joe, but also I you and Meg going to the theater without me. Amy, you said you were busy. I didn't know it was the Seven Castles of Diamond Lake. I keep that book under my pillow, and I shall never see it in my life. We have reserved seats. You couldn't go and sit by yourself. I could, and have all the men staring up and down. I don't care. You left me out on purpose, and I hate you all like poison. She takes hours to dress. We'd have missed the first act. It's true, but we should have asked her, Meg. Should, should, should. I'm drowning in shoulds. Why, you're never angry. 
I am angry nearly every day of my life, Joe, but I've learned not to show it. I fear it will take me another 40 years to control it. When I'm never half as good as you, Mommy, I will be satisfied. And I wish for you to be a great deal better. I will try. I swear to you, I will try. And it won't help a bit to break my ribs. <laughs> now go, dear. Make your peace. You know you want to go. Indeed, I do. 
I wish for you to be beautiful and good, for you both to have happy youths and be wisely married. For I would rather see you poor men's wives if you were happy and contented than queens on thrones without self-respect and peace. Thank you, Marmy. Good night, my darling. scientific lecture. John Brooks will not. And Joe, dreaming up castles in the air. Wouldn't it be nice if we all could just live up there? Of such a quantity, it would be hard to choose. Oh, tell us. Mine and yours. If my sisters will. To see the world, to settle in Italy, become a world-famous musician, and never be worried about money or business, but just enjoy myself and live for what I like. Meg's next. I should like a grand house with red cushions. And no one else in it? Oh, I don't know. Wouldn't you like some nice, handsome, wise husband? And little, jealous children like a romance and all. You would have nothing but horses and inkstands in yours. Arabian steeds that fly in a magic inkstand, so that all of my works are as famous as Laurie's writing, and I would never be forgotten after I'm dead. Which would quite suit me. Mine is to stay home safe with father and mother, and perhaps teach children. Oh, and play the piano. You, Mr. Brooks. I should like to own my own school someday, and you and Meg will teach in it. I should like that. Will it be? I shall attend the Sorbonne and become the best artist in the world. I'm sure you will be, John. Well, I say castles, everyone. I fear I have no real dreams or talents. Indeed, you have your beauty and spirit. Nonsense. See if it doesn't bring you something worth having, eh, John? Please stop. Wait ten years and we shall see. Ten years? I shall be on all throne. Oh, I'm such a lazy dog, I will probably just dawdle and piddle. No, no, we must work against the grain. My grandfather wants me to be a trade merchant, but I hate silk and spices. Fusty, musty, dusty ships. I shall make four years of, of college to him and want to please myself. Sail away in one of your ships and never come home until you've tried your own way. How wrong, Joe. You must honor his grandfather's wishes. Perhaps not for a whole lifetime. Well, I shan't do him ill. My grandfather's a good old bird, just as your mother's the perfect woman. John Brooks' words exactly. Poor Brooks. If I get my wish, I shall do great things for him. I believe we'll be all right. Begin to do something now, Lori, by not plaguing his life out. Oh, no. You have met Will because he's employed as your tutor. More like the cavalry coming up the hill. Oh, no, now I've ruined the room, haven't I? I'm sorry, Lori, please don't be offended. We think of you as our brother and just say what we like. I did mean it kindly. No need to apologize. I'm the one who should be forgiven. Apologies to all. No harm done. I've been out of sorts all day. I like you to be sisterly, I really do. Enough of me, I must go. I'm a terrible grump not to be locked away. Will you pretend I'm nice and let me come again? Yes, if you behave as small boys ought to at a party. Well, cheers me up not to be irredeemable until we meet again. Hi, Lori. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I must settle him down. Of course. Good day. <laughs> one fire and one water. If you don't mind, I might have to settle you down. Stop it, Joe.
Mr. Brooks, we've Ms. not seen you in days. Miss March. We really haven't seen you in days, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was at the Lawrence's to hear Sister play, and I found this glove. Oh, I've been looking everywhere. It's yours, I think. Yes, only one. Yes. I am grateful, Mr. Brooks. Well, do come by and visit more often. We don't buy it. Yes, I mean, no, I mean, that would be. Nice. Yes, very nice indeed. Well, <laughs> good day, Miss March. Strange. Oh, my. <laughs>
She'll march them when you give up your unladylike ways. Never and never again. Oh, you must be visiting someone dressed so fine. The gardeners. Sally Gardner told the bell on his wedding. They're to spend the winter in Paris. Do you envy her, Meg? I'm afraid I do. Good. Then you won't go off and marry some man who's poor as a mouse. I know exactly what you're getting at, Joe March, and I shall never just go and marry anyone. Well, some of us might go and marry someone, you know. Oh, you best hold your tongue, young Florence. Not forever, Joe March. <laughs> Do you 
mommy, Amy, please. What is it, mommy? Your husband very ill. Come at once. Oh, no. It's from a hospital in Washington. I only hope. Oh, children, children, help me bear it. Oh, Lord, you can do it. I'll get your things ready this way. Okay, okay. No time for tears now. Let me think. Laurie. Hear me, how may I help? If you would send a letter to the post office saying I'll come right away. The early morning train, I'll take that. I'll see to it. Will you send a note to Aunt Marge's journal? Laurie told me outside. Might I offer myself as an escort to Washington? Well... Travel can be difficult in these times, and you may need assistance in Washington. You will, Mother. A fine idea. How very kind of you, John. I accept with pleasure. I must pack. Here you go, Mother. What's this, Joe? A small contribution toward making Father comfortable again. Twenty-five dollars? Joe, I hope you've done nothing rash. I finally got paid for my stories in the paper. But you have needs, Joe. Books I know you've been saving for. Are you sure you won't regret this? Never. I could never have even hoped my stories might have helped Father. Dear Joe. Well, I suppose it is the smallest bit heroic. Joe! <laughs> well, I certainly didn't think myself capable of a laugh at this time. I know your hearts, girls, and I know what a blow this is. But our faith will prevail. We must trust. Now to bed, each and every one, for we must be of the dawn. Wait, pray with me, daughters.